International Living has uh, rated us as the number one um, uh, country for retirement due to many, many reasons, including our immigration programs that I just mentioned, the cost of living, uh, also uh, how safe we are, uh, the infrastructure, I'm talking about our roads and uh, the inter internet connection, everything, uh, we're very modern. Hi everybody, uh, Jose Luis Morales here. Welcome back. Today we're talking to Berlisa. Uh, she is out of Panama. She is a real estate attorney and also a real estate agent. And today Berlisa is going to be educating us on the home buying process, how to purchase property in Panama. Welcome to the show, Berlisa. How are you? Hi, Jose Luis. How are you? I'm very good. We're going to try to do this in English. As you know, Panama. Our language here, the native language is Spanish, but uh -huh. we'll try our best to do it in English as well. I appreciate you doing that. You're very welcome. And um, as uh, Jose Luis said, um, I am a real estate attorney with over 17 years of practice in the real estate industry in Panama. I also manage to do a lot of uh, relocation. So mm -hmm. we are very involved in the international uh, industry. Uh, we uh, try to assist to conventions, et cetera, and bring uh, clients from abroad to Panama. So we, we more than sell real estate, we sell Panama as a brand. So I, hopefully I'll be able to answer most of your questions regarding how to buy property in Panama mm -hmm. and how to assist a foreign client to purchase a real estate in Panama, whether Sounds it's good. for investment or a second home. So let's start off there. Like if I wanted to purchase a property in Panama, what would be the first step? Like I know in in the United States, there's websites that I can look for properties for sale. There's like Zillow, Redfin, Trulia. Yeah. Are most of the properties posted online somewhere? Yes. Or is that something that is mainly like pocket listings, like only individual brokers? Or what would be the first step if I wanted to be? Well, um, the first step, of course, you know, uh, nowadays everybody goes online. Uh, as the United States and Europe and many other countries, of course, we manage a lot of the business online. There are a couple of um, uh, websites or platforms that most uh, realtors use. We do have an MLS, but it's a, it's a very a small MLS and it's not a public MLS uh, to say that way. It's, um, it's an MLS that we use within the National Local Association of Realtors, which is ACOVIR. It's one of three associations. And if you're a member of their association, you can use that at the MLS. And it uh, works um, like the MLS in the United States as well. But it's, it's a small MLS, as I said, that association of realtors has around 400 agents and not everybody fits the, the platform uh, with the MLS is relatively new, probably 10 to 12 years of use in Panama. I, I use the MLS primarily when I um, list properties. I prefer to be a listing agent, uh, but um, you can also um, go online. We have uh, two main, I will say two main platforms. One is called Encuentra 24, which is the, the most popular one. Yeah, most of the clients go there and they will find uh, right now mostly property posted by real estate agents or real estate companies. Um, there are a few for sale by owners, as, as you know, like per usual everywhere, but mostly you will find uh, the properties there and then you will contact the agent and you will decide uh, what agent you want to work with. So Encuentrame 24 is one of the websites, yes. almost like a Zillow where people go. go that will be like our Zillow, correct. Now, if somebody wanted to purchase a property, is is most of most of it cash out there? Like I know in the United States, we have different programs. Like we have like an FHA loan, we have conventional loans, we have low down payment, we have down payment assistance, we have thirty year fixed, we have uh, variable rates. There's a lot of different products. What do the loan products look like in Panama? Well, uh, our banking system is very conservative. It's, it's very different than the banking uh, system in the United States or mm -hmm. Canada. Um, right now, because of COVID, many banks have uh, changed their policies and it's a little bit more difficult for foreigners to obtain financing here. Uh, it, it used to be easier, but you can still obtain financing here for a second home um, or an investment property. Uh, 
it depends on the bank. We had many, many banks to work with. Um, for a foreigner, you're looking at a 30 or 40% down payment. Uh, what the banks are going to ask from you as a foreigner are your uh, last two income tax returns, uh, proof of income, uh, banking uh, movements. Uh, once you are approved for financing here, the bank is going to request um, uh, a life insurance to back up the loan and uh, fire insurance for the property as well. That's awesome. I, they, they don't require life insurance in the United States. So exactly. That's kind of We're very conservative. The reason why uh, the bank here requires the life insurance is because uh, if you pass away, uh, the life insurance is going to pay off the loan with the bank and your uh, heirs are not going to have to uh, deal with the bank or, or the bank is not going to have to deal with them. Uh, the, the property will go to your heirs directly. What about like uh, in the United States, like the loans are like longer term, like there's a 30 year fixed loan. What do the interest rates look like? Like I know that there's variable, meaning it goes up and down based on where the marketplace is. How does that work uh, in Panama? We do have long-term uh, loans here as well. Um, in Panama, because the banks are very conservative, uh, they will just uh, lend you money up to the age of 75. So if you are 50, you're going to get up to 25 years. If you are 60, you're not going to get more than 15 years on your loan. So the, the top will be 75. There are a couple banks, mostly banks from the government that will go up to 79 or some, but the, the, the rule is 75, up to 75 years of age. And we do have different interest rates depending on the value of the property. Also, if, the, if it's a new property, we manage something that is called preferential rate, which can be anything from zero to 3.5% uh, because there, the, the government will subsidize the, the difference in the interest rate uh, for up to 10 years, depending on, on the different um, uh, prices of the property. Uh, the preferential uh, interest rate will uh, cover properties, brand new properties, up to $180,000. After that, you uh, will not be eligible for the preferential interest rate. It also has to be your first property and residential for residential purposes to get that. If it's not in the preferential interest rate, then um, the average right now, because it may vary, you know, because of inflation, but right now the average is 5.75%. And that's for your primary residency. If it's an investment property, it can go up to 7% uh, and so on. It, it's case by case. Has it always been like, I know in the United States, the rates have been a lot lower. Just recently, they started going up. Have you guys noticed an increase in interest rates as well too? Or has, has that kind of been, has that always kind of been like the average, like somewhere 575 to seven on investment and then the preferential rate up to three, 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 for, seven. For the past 15 years, at least, that has been the average, anything between 4.75 and six. Um, in the past, it was higher, you know, uh, but uh, conditions have changed. Right now, we're still on the 5.75%, but I, I can see that because of the inflation, it may, we, we may get higher uh, interest rates in the near future and then are these fixed rate meaning like they're fixed for like the length of time or do they no, are they no, fixed for not really time and do they or and then they vary because i know that there's different types of loan structures yeah well the the normal the normal mortgage uh, loans here are variable it is it's very um weird or difficult to find some of those loans uh, with the fixed interest rate. You can also uh, take a loan against money that you have on a CD and there, then you may be able to negotiate to have a fixed interest rate. There are different types of, of, of loans, of course. We're talking about uh, the most general cases. But even then, it sounds like the the rates have been pretty consistent, at least for the last 15 years. You yeah. know? So even if it is variable, it sounds like there's a Good level of consistency yeah we, we have a very stable economy you know panama has a dollarized economy uh, since 1903 that we became a republic the american dollar is the legal currency paired with our balboa which is the panamanian currency i know that you said that they loan up to the age of 75 what's the max term of a, a loan like i like let's say somebody is 30 does that mean could they get a 45 year old 30, 35 years 35 uh, is the max yeah it's Absolutely. the maximum I have seen. Yeah. And then like, let's say like, uh, what, what would you say are prices like, and what are some of the most popular areas to maybe buy like, uh, in Panama? 
Yeah, there are um, three main areas where foreigners like to uh, look for properties. Of course, Panama City and Panama City has different neighborhoods that uh, people like to check when they come to Panama. For example, Costa del Este, which is one of the newest uh, developments um, closer to the, the international airport and Santa Maria, which is r really the newest one and the trendiest. Um, Properties in that area um, range from 200,000 to one and a half million dollars, depending on um, what the property features, uh, et cetera. Santa Maria has uh, a new golf uh, course and is uh, five minutes from the uh, Tocumen International Airport. Uh, then you have the area of Punta Pacifica mm -hmm. um, and, um, and then the oldest um, neighborhoods in the city like El Cangrejo, O Barrio, San Francisco. You know, uh, almost from everywhere you get ocean view in Panama, you know, we're a very narrow strip of land uh, and we have oceans on both sides. Um, and then uh, after that, you will like to go uh, some 50 minutes from the city to the uh, Panama Pacific beaches. The beaches in, the Pan in Panama City, um, we don't swim in those beaches in the city. Uh, the, the, there are, the, uh, I think the closest one is Playa Bonita, which is in the Veracruz area, 15 minutes from here. You can swim in that one, but people prefer to um, go uh, 50 minutes from the city uh, to the area of Coronado, San Carlos, uh, Chame, up to Rio Ato, where there are different clusters. The oldest one being Coronado. Coronado is the oldest um, um, beach community in, in Panama, established in, in the early 50s. It's like the epicenter of uh, all the commercial activity in the beach area. Uh, but there are several new developments uh, with golf courses, uh, ocean access, and, and it depends on your budget and the size of the property you want. You can get an apartment in an oceanfront building with five view, uh, two bedroom, uh, 800 square feet uh, for $170,000, for example. I sell those. If you want one, please call me. You get your referral. That's so awesome. That's cool. Obviously, you can get like a condo for, or is that a condo or is that a house? That will be a condo, but you can get a house, not oceanfront, um, for 150, 250. Depends. It depends on 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 uh, the finishes, uh, proximity to the ocean. Uh, if you want ocean view, the neighborhood. If it's an older neighborhood or newer neighborhood, I mean, Buenaventura is uh, the trendiest one in my, my from my point of view in that area and, uh, and there you're looking at properties that uh, range from uh, 600 to uh, two, three million dollars. It depends, it, it, it depends on, on the budget. I mean, there is everything, uh, there is something for every budget. What would you say like a, like a $2 million property is like? Is that like a 7,000 square foot home? Is that a 5,000 square foot home? Is that like a 3,000 square foot home? What would you say in terms of uh, like size, uh, size of lot? Like what does that typically get you? It depends on the area where you want to be. A $2 million home in Panama City will not buy you the same than in the Coronado area. We're just uh, in the Coronado area. After that, uh, there is a, a, a third area that foreigners um, also like to uh, uh, check, which is the Chiriqui area in, in Boquete. Um, and I understand most foreigners like that area because of the altitude and uh, the weather is, uh, is, is cooler there. You know, Panama is, is a it's very hot, uh, it's, it's warm all year round. The, we only have two seasons to say something. We have the rainy season and the dry season. The rainy season lasts nine months. You know, this is the, the rainforest. Um, so it depends. If you want to buy in Boquete with $2 million, you're going to buy a huge stay, probably a coffee plantation um, if it, with nice finishes, you know, swimming pool, uh, if you buy in the Coronado area, as I said, if you buy in Coronado, $2 million will buy you a, a big property as well, uh, ocean front. And if you go to Buenaventura, you may get something smaller. So it all depends on where you want to be and uh, what you want to have in your property. What about the, I, I know that it's uh, Balboa and then the U.S. dollar. What about the cost of living? Like, let's say for somebody that is not like, let's say I'm a foreigner, I want to maybe go out there and retire out there. Like, uh, what would you say like a cost of living is like if I wanted to maybe have even like a in-house maid, if I wanted 
uh, maybe have some uh, like food? What does what that typically mm -hmm. look like? Uh, a, a, a retired couple, for example, um, in my experience here, they are looking at living comfortable, having somebody coming to clean your house, um, including an entertainment, um, uh, medical expensive. Uh, you could be well off with uh, $2,500 a month, 3000 a month. And, and it could be, I mean, it, and I'm talking about having like a really nice lifestyle, but uh, you could live here nicely with $1,500, one person in a, a medium class neighborhood. Does that include uh, just food and like uh, maid services or does that include housing costs as well too? That includes right? housing, uh, house, house, uh, yeah, that your housing costs, medical, uh, I mean, provided that you don't have any <laughs> major medical issues, you know, uh, entertainment, yeah, going out to eat a couple of times a day, groceries, so let's say that I uh, I go out there, I find a real estate agent, I've got my loan taken care of. Like in the United States, there's two different systems. One of them is called escrow, and that's typically in the West Coast. And then there's lawyers, and that's typically in the East Coast. What does that process look like? What is a typical close of escrow time frame? Like an escrow grows in five days, 45 days? Yeah, in Panama, we don't manage escrow or title insurance. It's a very different way to do business here. And there there are a couple ways to protect your money once you uh, decide to buy a property. Um, if you decide to buy a property, whether it's cash or is uh, through bank financing, uh, the way to do it is you have to pay the down payment directly to the owner of the property and uh, write a promise to sell agreement. Uh, it will be better if you have a lawyer overlooking uh, the transaction to better protect your interest. And uh, if you're buying cash, you can deposit the, the money in your own bank account and request from the bank a promissory letter of payment, uh, which is basically a check with a condition that says, uh, Mr. Jose Luis Morales, uh, Ms. Berlisa Rosamena has instructed the bank to uh, pay you the amount of $200,000 once the title clears to her name. That's because we don't have uh, title insurance uh, um, here in Panama. So that's the best way to protect you. Once the bank can verify that the public registry uh, has already recorded the transaction and your property has changed to my name, then you can go to the bank with your promissory letter of payment and pick up your check or request a, tra uh, tra a wire transfer to your bank account. And this promissory letter of payment will be an insurance for both parties because I am signing over my property to, uh, or you are signing over your property to me in this example, but you know that I have the money to pay. Whether it's financing or it's uh, my own funds, the money is there, the bank is telling you, we have uh, a check to your name, but it's conditioned to the fact that the property is already transferred to the person that has instructed us to pay you this money. And uh, it's an insurance for me that I'm not going to give you money until the title has cleared. So that's that's the best way to do it. There are other couple of ways you can do it. And there are very, very few companies that also offer escrow services here. But escrow services will be very expensive because mm -hmm. there are not many companies that offer that service here. What would you say are some of the things that you've seen go wrong or that people should be cautious of as it relates to maybe selling or even buying a property? Like The main thing um, the, the buyer has to do is uh, hire either a professional realtor or um, an attorney that, that specializes in real estate to do title search. Because the last thing you want to do is give 20, 30 percent down payment of a three hundred thousand dollar property and you have not checked that title and the title has a lien on it, uh, whether because the person owes taxes or owes a, a mortgage, uh, you know, has a delinquent payment. So the first thing you have to do is hire somebody to conduct title search and give you a report on how uh, much money that property owes, if it has a lien on it or if it uh, hasn't paid taxes. You want to know that before you commit to give your down payment and um, sign your promise to sell agreement. How are we doing so far? I think we're doing excellent. Uh, I, it's so interesting to me how like it, uh, the process is different, you know? So like if I'm a foreigner, or if I'm an investor, or if I'm somebody looking to buy in Panama, 
I would say that this information would be extremely helpful for them to actually uh, know this information. What I was going to ask you is, is it once you give the deposit to the seller, is it pretty much if you find out that there's liens after that, is that like impossible to get that money back? And also one more thing in the United States, there's a contingency period. Like in the United States, you have a certain, like you accept my offer as a seller. Then I have 17 days to do any inspections in the property, meaning title insurance and everything to make sure that I'm satisfied after the 17 days, I remove that contingency. And then we close escrow. Is that, Similar or different in Canada? Not at all. Nope. Here, before you commit to sign the promise to sell agreement or give a down payment or even even a reserve, if it's not a brand new property, when we talk about brand new properties, it's different. You go to the developer and you pay. I mean, it's a, it's a brand new uh, property. The the title just was just born, so you're not likely going to find any problems with that. We're talking about resale. Uh, here, the process is. You find the property you like, either your real estate agent or your attorney uh, request from the owner the, the property number, uh, which the property is recorded with in the public registry. And then uh, you can conduct the title search, make a report, and you request from the owner um, at, uh, the document from our internal revenue services, which is called uh, the HEI, DGI showing uh, if the property is exempted from paying taxes because we have properties that are exempted up to 20 years. Uh, others are exempted up to five and 10, depending on different uh, 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 taxes table. Um, you want to see that the property doesn't owe taxes. And if it does, because it may happen that those taxes, uh, the, the, the owner can pay off with the down payment you're giving and in the promise to sell agreement you're going to write down that the down payment that you're giving is going to be used towards paying the taxes or whatever needs to be clear and uh, i mean if if something goes wrong you can always use the promise to sell agreement to uh, request your money back what our civil code here says uh, is that if you sign with me a promise to sell agreement and we have a term of course to close, let's say 30, 60, 90 days, it depends on uh, what we agree. And three days before the closing, you say, Berlisa, I decided I don't want to buy the property, then you lose your down payment. If I decide three days before the closing, Jose Luis, uh, I'm not gonna sell you my property because I found somebody that is gonna pay me more, then I will have to give you back your down payment plus an equal sum as indemnization for making you waste your time. So you, you need to hire an attorney to write uh, this document for you protecting, uh, I mean, each, each party actually needs to have their attorneys uh, writing up this promise to sell agreement covering all these um, different contingencies. That's, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. So if the seller wants to back out, they would have to reimburse them the down payment and a equal amount uh, yeah. to what they did for making them waste the time. That's really, uh -huh. yeah, because otherwise, you know, and, 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 and it makes sense because let's say you're coming from California to buy a property. You came here, you sold the property, uh, you spend money, uh, in your airplane ticket, your stay, you hire an attorney and, uh, you gave me $20,000 down payment. You go back to California you start moving, uh, money, doing these things, all that costs money. And then you come back to Panama to close and I decide I want to sell. Here are your $20,000. What happened with the rest of the money that you pay? I mean, you, you need to get something for it damages, you know, so it, it makes sense. And then um, you said that the money gets transferred to the seller's bank account at, at the very beginning. It, like over here, the money gets transferred to an escrow account. So mm -hmm. like the escrow is the holder. My concern with transferring the money directly to the seller, can it mm -hmm. ever happen when like almost goes missing? Your attorney can put a lien on that property. At that point. So you're protected basically. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What I, uh, uh, most people here, they sign the promise to sell agreement in a simple document and go to the notary for authentication of the signature. In my practice, in my office, we, uh, the promise to sell agreements, we record them right, right away in a public deed and we register it with the public registry and it puts a lien on the property until the closing day. And nobody can go and lift it, but the owner of the document, which is the person promising to buy. And that's why it's important to work with the right 
people. Because exactly. if you don't do that, they could essentially sell the property to two different people, collect two or three different deposits, and then almost disappear. But by doing that, that that protects uh, that exactly. protects the that consumer protects from being able to do that. You might be asking over here: the seller pays for all commissions; they pay for both the buyer's agent and the listing agent. How do commissions work out in Panama? Just out of curiosity. Okay, here is customary that the seller, I mean the, the person listing the property will pay the commission as long as that owner has signed a contract or an agreement with the real estate agent that is uh, bringing the client to buy yeah. the property. But um, um, we can also be hired by a buyer and mm -hmm. sign a buyer's representation agreement and the buyer will have to pay the commission in that case. But that's not the rule. I mean, the rule is that the seller pays the commission. Are most of the sales that happen through real estate agents out there or are most of the sales that happen like for the owner? Because I know in the United States, a very large percentage happens real estate agent to real estate agent. Very small percentage happens owner to owner. They do happen. I know in other countries like Mexico, most of them happen owner to owner almost. Not here. Not, not here. Here, here uh, is almost the same than in the United States. In the past, maybe it, it was... Um, owner to owner, the highest percentage. But right now is most of the times there are agents involved and most of the times there are two agents involved, an agent for, uh, you know, the listing agent and, and the buyer's uh, re uh, representation agent. Yeah, that's that's pretty much, you know, as long as you have an agreement signed with the, the owner of the property. Um, I don't know if, if you're aware of this, but right now in Panama, we are in a buyer's market. That's what I was going to ask you. I was going to uh -huh. ask you next um, if we were in a buyer's or a seller's market. So for our viewers that maybe don't know what a buyer's market is, what, what, is, what does it mean to be in a buyer's market? A buyer's market means you have more inventory than demand, more, more people selling than people buying. And when you have more people selling than people buying in the real estate market, it's like any, any market, you know, like a... Uh, prices have to be adjusted or go down so you can sell. So your property is more attractive out there uh, because if you have one buyer and 10 properties to show that one buyer, you know what they say, cash is key. will request, you know, something, uh, one more bang for their dollar. That's what happens in a buyer's market. You know, people have to compete. You have to offer something good. Your property has to be well presented or you have to uh, leave furniture or something. You, know, you, have, you have to be attractive to sell and the price has to be right. So there's basically negotiations that happen right now because of the type of uh, market that we're uh, in at the, at the moment. Um, are you seeing prices come down at all in Panama right now because we are in a buyer's market? And if so, kind of maybe talk to us about a little bit about what you're seeing in terms of prices. Um, what, what what have prices been like in the last 10 years? Have they appreciated? Have they depreciated? In the, in the past five years, prices had to come down. Now we're um, more stable, but prices definitely uh, had to come down uh, within the last five years. And, but it will also depend on the area where you buy, want to buy. There are prime areas that the prices have not gone down at all and they're still selling very well, you know, like, and, and, and after the pandemic, well, we're still in the pandemic, but after the, the, the quarantines and all that, the, the restrictions, we have seen more people wanting to buy houses uh, in the beach area or uh, mountain because uh, people don't want to be restricted in small apartments anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so th those uh, those areas have not depreciated at all. They they are appreciating. What about like investments? Like, do you get a lot of people buying out there for investments, or is it mainly like people that want to live and use the property? Uh, we have both, and uh, I also have many clients that buy to live and also buy two or three more properties for investment. Many people like to buy in the beach area because there are no restrictions for Airbnb in that area. In the city, Airbnb is uh, restricted because. There is a law, uh, an incentive for hotels, and that protects the hotels that uh, nobody can rent for less than 45 days in the city unless the building has a special license. So many people um, will buy in the beach area to uh, put those properties on Airbnb or short-term rentals and make extra money. What would a good investment look like? Maybe like, can you give us an example? Like, okay, I buy a property for 
250,000 in this beach. I can maybe get X amount of dollars as an Airbnb, or I can get X amount of dollars as a traditional rental. Can you give us maybe one example or a couple of examples of different uh, scenarios just so that our viewers can kind of mm -hmm. get an idea? Maybe like. Remember, I mentioned at the beginning of the interview uh, that you can buy a 700, 800 square feet uh, apartment in oceanfront building. Well, those apartments you buy for. $159,000 if, if you buy cash uh, with the developer and it will cost you another $25,000 to furnish it and condition it to rent it. And uh, I can tell you for a fact here, we manage uh, many of those apartments on Airbnb and short term rentals for our foreign clients. And uh, those apartments are rented out at least 20 days out of a month. And uh, Oh, homeowners association fees, for example, in that building that has tons of amenities is only $105 a month. That's very important too. Uh, in Panama, your homeowners association fees and insurances are very low in comparison with what you have to pay in the United States. We are a hurricane free uh, country, you know, so our insurance in an oceanfront property is not going to be as high as in uh, Florida or California. And so you for me those um, are really good investment properties and uh, you're looking at a return on investment of five percent which is not bad for how the market is right now because as as you know i mean if the market is not good also the rentals are low rentals went down 40 percent uh within the past five years wow so you need to look for a property that will um, actually give you a good return on your investment uh for rentals or if you want to resell because um, we're talking right now about investing to rent and make like immediate money but you can also invest in property that you will resell for a good price uh, you can buy repos i am i like to buy repos or properties from people that are divorcing that kind of stuff you know that you yeah. can have equity in the long term so it depends on what kind of investment and how long you want to wait for your return. So you said it, they could rent for about 20 days a night on an Airbnb. What would a nightly rate be for something like that? Like a hundred dollars? Those little apartments, um, I believe um, uh, Gabriel here in the office manages those. Uh, he told me yesterday, just yesterday I asked him, it was $109 a night, a night and the person also pays for the cleaning mm -hmm. service on top mm -hmm. of that. So maybe, maybe it brings in like 2000 plus for a building that you're into it for 185,000 exactly. refurbish yeah. it. So yeah, it, uh, uh, usually I have a rule, it's called the 1% rule. So like mm -hmm. if it costs you 200,000, you should be able to rent it out for 1% of that, which would be $2,000. And that looks like it fits that rule. Do you get a lot of people just buying raw land ever in Panama to like build houses? Or do you mainly get people buying uh, the finished product, what is best? Is it best to buy the raw land and kind of just build it and develop it? Or, or is it best to almost just buy directly from a builder or like even somebody that's getting divorced or a bank? This will be a case by case thing. Mm -hmm. uh, in my experience, because uh, my, my, my target client is um, a retiree, you know, most people when they are over 65, they don't want to deal with building, especially uh, no, if, if they don't speak the language, you know, it's very hard for them to start from scratch. When you retire, you want to relax. You don't want to come here and be dealing with uh, um, uh, constructors and, you know, in a different culture that you don't know how to, to deal with. Uh, so most of my clients prefer to buy something that is already built uh, and, and, and pref preferable if it's... Um, a property that is brand new that you can buy directly from a developer. There mm -hmm. are a few adventurers that will go, you know, like uh, rent a property close by to the lot and build themselves. But uh, that's not the, 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 the main case, you know, it's not, it's not the rule. And I would not advise uh, you to do that. You can do it probably because you are uh, younger and you speak Spanish. So maybe you can handle that. But if you are uh, a foreigner that doesn't speak the language and uh, you're older, I wouldn't advise you to do that. It will be very expensive because you will have to hire somebody to be like your intermediary and that will probably double the cost of the building. What would you say like in California, like 
you can build at three hundred dollars a square foot. That's like a good deal. Two fifty is like a really good deal for a square foot. Do you guys have something like that for Panama as well, too, where somebody oh, here is to way do... cheaper? Yeah, I, I had clients from California recently here, and uh, they had seen a, a condo for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and they mentioned to me that they could never afford something like that in California because they will have to spend one and a half million to two million dollars to buy a, a property with that view and that size. That was um, two thousand square feet apartment. Uh, with great. ocean view yeah yeah and uh, you know there is a report that encuentra 24 the the web page i told you that is like our silo recently uh, shared with uh, um, the clients uh, that, that re real estate agents that um, use their platform that i will share with you so you can have an idea of the prices on the different areas that i mentioned you can maybe share that with your uh, potential mm -hmm. clients or investors um, there are a couple other things you haven't asked me, uh, but um, that uh, are, are good to mention. Like Panama has many, many immigration programs uh, to incentivize people to invest here in Panama. Uh, we have uh, one called the Friendly Nations, uh, in, when, in which you can get um, permanent residency. First, temporary residency for two years, and then after two years, you will get your permanent residency if you, if you invest in a property that is at least $200,000. Uh, we also have an expedite um, residency, permanent residency program for people that invest. Uh, until October, you have to invest $300,000. Uh, if you are going to buy after October this year, it will go to up to $500,000, but you will get permanent residency within 30 days. Wow. That's our newest, yeah, that's our newest program, but we have over 14 different categories of visa. I will be also uh, sharing that information with you and maybe you can invite me to another podcast where we, we'll talk about that because it, there is a lot of information to share on that. Um, what a foreigner mainly needs to bring um, to Panama when they intend to process uh, a permanent, uh, uh, any kind of residency for any kind of residency program is their FBI uh, re uh, police report, you know, their police record. Uh, nationwide uh, and um, their proof of income, their proof of income. And all doc those documents have to be authenticated either before the closest Panamanian consulate or apostille with the secretary of state uh, on the state that this person lives. Well, we normally provide all that information. We take care of translations here in Panama, certified translations and the rest of the documents. But that's, uh, those are the, the main two documents. We also have another um, program called Pension Out of Visa, which is uh, for retirees. As long as you have a pension, uh, it can be from Social Security or any other annuity, uh, collecting a minimum of $1,000 a month, uh, uh, you will get permanent residency as well uh, with that program. And um, you're looking at uh, legal fees for the Pension Out of Visa or the Friendly Nations uh, legal fees will be around $2,000. Uh, you can also negotiate that. And uh, government expenses will be around uh, another $1,000. And uh, if you want to do the expedite visa, of course, that visa uh, targets uh, wealthy people. The government fees are higher, way higher. So, But you get your permanent residency in 30 days. And uh, I can provide all that information uh, to you as well, I love so it. you can share with your potential Please. investors. But there are many, many ways you can uh, put your money to use here in Panama. Um, you, uh, even if you have a, a pension that is lower than a thousand dollars, if you combine that with the purchase of a property, the government will accept that as well. And we will see case by case, you know, uh, what works best for you uh, as a foreigner coming to invest here in Panama. What I love about it is that there's a policy designed to help stimulate the economy and to help make the process faster, which that's like good policies. You know, anytime you can do something to incentivize the economy like that, I think it's excellent. Exactly. So One of the, 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 the other important things I want to mention is that um, uh, there is no difference uh, for foreigners that own property here in Panama. You will have the same price than a Panamanian when it comes to own property, because as you know, there are several countries where foreigners cannot own property. Uh, it's only for uh, nationals. But here, as a foreigner, you will have the same rights than a Panamanian 
to buy property. There are a few exceptions uh, in our constitution. For example, a foreigner cannot buy property within 10 kilometers from the borders. And yet, you know, that's for uh, logic reasons. We, we need to protect our borders. And that's, that's pretty much. Okay. Uh, there's, uh, I heard this uh, quote somewhere. They say that Panama is the number one retirement destination. That's correct. International, international living has uh, rated us as the number one um, uh, country for retirement due to many, many reasons, including our immigration programs that I just mentioned, the cost of living, uh, also uh, how safe we are. Yeah, the infrastructure, I'm talking about our roads and uh, the inter internet connection, everything. Uh, we're very modern. I mean, if, if you come to Panama, uh, once you get to the city coming from the airport, you will see our skyline is like a little Miami. Yeah, we're, we're a very modern country. Uh, you know, we have the Panama Canal here as well, which um, ensures that our economy is very strong and uh, and we, we have enough... Uh, uh, means to um, uh, keep our infrastructure uh, well. But we're, we're a very safe country. Uh, we have the largest banking uh, center uh, or the second largest bank and banking center in the world. So yeah, that's, yeah, those are some of the reasons why we have been rated by international living for several years uh, as a number one retire, uh, country to retire. I think I'm going to have to go visit Panama. I think that's what I'm. Yeah, gonna... of course. I'll I, get I... you. I'll get you a couple of days uh, free at that condo that I just sold you. The condo by the beach. I'll get you a couple of days uh, rent before you own, but I'll get it for free for you. That's funny. You know, I the only time I've ever been there was on a layover. I think I was coming from South America, and we had a layover in Panama City, but that was uh, the only time. Um, anything else, uh, Berlisa, that you think would be helpful to maybe somebody looking to invest in Panama or buy? Uh, property in Panama or purchase uh, a property in Panama? The best um, thing you can do is uh, go online. Um, we, uh, many of us are members of the National Association of Realtors through our local uh, real estate um, association. You can go there and find a CIPS, a Certified International Property Specialist. Many of us have that designation. Go there, check um, uh, the different profiles, see who you want to work with. Um, and uh, hopefully somebody that speaks the language, you know, that's very important. The language barrier uh, may get you in trouble when you are going to buy a property. Um, don't take it lightly, you know, uh, the uh, purchase of a property is probably one of the most important investments in your lifetime. You're uh, sometimes risking your lifetime savings there. So. Uh, pay for uh, a legal advisor or a professional uh, realtor that you have checked their background before you start to see properties. That's if awesome. I was a foreigner, I would prefer to come and sign a buyer's representation agreement, even if I have to pay part of the fees, just to make sure that I'm buying, I'm buying a property with someone reliable and that will protect my assets uh, right off the bat. And then uh, if somebody wanted to get in touch with you, like let's say somebody saw enough value in this interview and they wanted to connect with you, what would be the best way to connect with you? The best way to connect with me, uh, you can go on my Instagram, is at Berlisa Panama Real Estate. Uh, my webpage is the same name, www.berlisapanamarealestate.com. And my telephone number, plus 507-64-07. 9862. I'm trying to think that number in English because, you know, English is my second language. You can tell by my accent. Yeah, you did well, though. You did very, very well. Thank you. That. I'm a certified public translator as well. I have many hats. That's funny. Cool. We are a one stop shop here. That's great. Well, uh, I just want to say thank you to our viewers for taking the time to watch this. We hope that this interview was helpful to you. Uh, today's interview was episode number 125. We had Berlisa, uh, rock star real estate agent, rock star attorney, rock star uh, translator as well, too. And uh, if you've enjoyed this episode and maybe you want to help us out, make sure to share it with a colleague, share it with a friend. If you're listening to this on Apple iTunes, make sure to uh, leave us a five star review. And then if you want to get further connected with me, you can follow me on Instagram, Jose Luis Morales at Instagram. And just uh, thank you guys again. Thank you, Berlisa. And thank you, uh, thank you so thank much. Thank you for the invite. Of course. Have a great day.